My family is trying to control how I spend my inheritance. I'm a 26-year-old female. My mom passed away last October and I received a few hundred thousand dollars in inheritance money. For more background info, my dad died when I was 15 years old to a drug overdose and I don't have any siblings. My partner, 27 years old, and I have been living with his parents since my mom passed away because right beforehand a natural disaster made our condo unlivable. So we've been living with them for about the last six months. As a result, we haven't had any rent payments to make and my bills are pretty minimal. My partner makes good money through a collectibles business that he conducts at home so he has a lot of flexibility. I've been feeling very lost in life after losing my mom and being parentless so my partner and I thought this period of time might be a good opportunity for us to explore and travel a bit, which his parents fully support and are okay with. We traveled to Mexico twice in the past couple months. It's only a few hour flight from us and cheap, once by Carnival Cruise and the other time we flew directly. My immediate family is composed of my grandmother, my mom's mom, and my mom's partner, who is like a stepdad to me but they weren't married. Both of them have serious issues with us doing any traveling at all because they think I'm just blowing through my inheritance or that it makes me unstable. My grandma has been very controlling and has been trying to direct me to return to and finish school immediately, something I don't feel I'm ready for right now. She doesn't ask me what I want to do with my life or how I want to do things. She just gives me orders like I'm a child. Both of them want me to buy a house, which I plan on doing. But I want to wait because the economy is not great right now and I also don't know where I want to live. I really want to live outside of my hometown where I've been residing and feel like my career should be in a better position more stable because I'll likely need to pay for repairs if I buy a cheap house with cash and I can't currently get a mortgage until I have more stable income. Now, my partner and I, we've been together for seven years by the way, have been planning a trip to Europe with the intention of getting engaged. We've been talking about getting engaged for the past year or two but put it off because my mom had been extremely ill for the past few years and it just wasn't the right time. He even already bought a ring last year. We also decided that if we get engaged it would be a several year engagement until our lives are more stable. I revealed the plans to my mom's partner and he was immediately cold towards me and irritated acting like I'm making an extremely irresponsible decision. My partner talked to him over the phone and they got into an argument. And my mom's partner suggested that the inheritance should have been split amongst my entire family, including him grandma, uncle and two cousins, and that it would be a better way to spend it than using some of it on a trip to Europe, that my partner is paying more for to begin with like 70 thirtieths. He also talked to my grandmother who thinks that us going on several trips vacations within six months of my mom dying is weird and irresponsible. My partner is now telling them that he will pay for the whole trip. He is able to do so financially, and now my grandma wants to see his bank statements or proof of income after he offered. I understand their concerns but also feel like they are trying to control me and my inheritance and feel like it's sort of crossing a boundary. Not that I'm planning on it, but if I chose to blow all of the money or spend it in ways they don't approve on, I feel like that is totally my choice and my consequences to face. I also don't think it's that crazy to want to travel after losing someone you love. I've seen it in depictions in movies, books, and even my uncle suggested that maybe I would want to get a camper and travel around America for a bit to get my bearings. Plus, we aren't planning on like backpacking in Europe for several months. It would be a two-week trip that we do fairly cheaply. We're not going to be blowing $10 K on one trip. I've lost both of my parents at a pretty young age and don't have much close family which leaves one incredibly frazzled, wounded and in need of some soul-searching in my opinion. I don't know. What do you all think? 
Is my family being controlling? Am I missing something or am I the one in the wrong? Advice or suggestions? In short, my family is being controlling about how I spend my inheritance. I want to spend a small portion of the money traveling, but they don't approve and it's causing tension in my relationship with them. Should I refrain from traveling to appease them or are they crossing boundaries by trying to control how I spend it? Edit. I also forgot to add this. There's a smaller amount of the money, like 30k, that is being held up in probate court. I have an attorney for it, but she has been taking an incredibly long time and I'm considering getting a different attorney. However, in the meantime, I'm worried about my stepdad or grandma going after the money against me. Is this something they could do? I'm wondering if I should cancel the trip, which was planned one week from now. I was heavily bullied since the beginning of kindergarten until the end of middle school, when I transferred in a different town. My classroom had 15 children, me excluded. Out of these 15, seven of them used to bully me constantly and the other eight simply ignored what was happening. Out of the seven bullies, four did some particularly heavy shit. I will call them the B team. You can guess what B stands for, while the other three did some random lighter things throwing paper scraps at me, stealing pencils and things like that. I will call them the C-team, or acted as followers for the B-team. What the B-team did to me scarred me for life and I had to go to therapy to deal with it. If I met them today, I would make them pay for everything they did to me. My hatred for the C-team is not nearly as big but it's still vivid. Until last year, I couldn't bring myself to forgive anybody in that classroom, both teachers and students for doing nothing to help me when the B-team was tormenting me. Last year, though my hatred started to fade following some serious events in my life, sorry, I won't share what events. When I transferred, I swore to myself I would never go back to that town or talk to any of them ever again. Despite that, my past has found ways to follow me. I work in a pub, not sure if this is the right term in English, part-time twice a week and around six months ago I met Nina there by chance. Nina was one of the three bullies of the C-team and while I have forgiven them now, it doesn't mean I want to have anything to do with hers, so I tried to stay professional and act as if nothing was wrong. Anyway, physically she hasn't changed much. I mean, she has grown up since middle school, obviously, but I could still recognize her. I'm not sure if I made myself clear. The same cannot be said for me probably. In middle school I was fat, white like snow and I had light brown hair, while now I'm fit. My skin is a bit more pink and my hair have darkened in the last few years. When some of my friends look at my old photos, they struggle to recognize me. We didn't talk for much as I was working and she initially didn't recognize me but when one of my colleagues called me to ask me something, she connected the dots. I have a particular name that is rare in our country, as it's really old-fashioned and nobody use it anymore. Imagine, uh, I don't know, being called Aristotle today. Once she recognized me, her demeanor changed drastically and she got out pretty soon. She came back a couple of times in the following months and she was quite shy toward me whenever we interacted. A few weeks ago she got mildly drunk and she started sobbing and ranting about what a crappy person she was in the past and how her life is shit. It was the classic drunken rambling and I didn't pay it much attention. I simply stopped serving her alcohol and gave her some water but at some point she grabbed my hand while I was taking away one of the empty glasses and she apologized. I have to say it felt weirdly good. She didn't come back in the following weeks but few days ago she texted me on social media, apologizing profusely for whatever she did while drunk and then she suddenly asked me out. At the time, I was evidently too stupid or tried to understand clues and didn't understand it was meant as a date. She asked me out for a coffee and I thought she simply wanted to apologize in person or talk about the past in a more sober state. I realized my mistake yesterday, when I talked about it with a friend. Now I'm torn on what I should do. On one side, what Nina did in the past has conditioned me greatly and I can't simply forget about it. On the other, she really looks apologetic and she seems to have changed. It's been 15 years and maybe I should give her a chance. I used to be a nice guy. We all know the typical nice guy. 
the man who goes after girls and when they politely reject him, he insults them and says they are just like the rest, showing his true colors. I was one of them. I was never one for insults, but I had that mindset. Junior year of high school, I had gotten tired of constantly being rejected by the girls I like and for them to run off with not the best of people. I would be rude and gross to girls. Saying the typical, I am a nice guy give me a chance. Or, you just date abusive guys and leave us nissigies. I felt those things deep down. The girl I crushed on for years never liked me back but I still thought I was tough shit. I stuck around and slowly worked on my crippling anxiety to get through high school. It took all of my time and a lot of self-isolation. About two years out of high school, the same crush from before started texting me again. We hit it off her admitting that she shared feelings and it was going well. It was the thing I thought I wanted but quickly realized I wasn't fit to handle. I was still stuck on my ideals in ways that caused my anxiety to come back. I wanted her to constantly text me and I got extremely jealous. I wasn't who I had worked so hard to become. She started to distance herself from me. I found myself struggling with how to keep her and I got more clingy. She couldn't handle my stress and I still feel bad I was ever like that. It was almost like being a teen again. Seeing her and finally having what I always wanted, it hit me like a truck the day she started dating my best friend. It hurt a lot and I ended up losing him and her in the process. I took it upon myself to work on it. I needed to be me again. Who up until now was starting to feel confident in life and knew who I was. Shortly after this disaster, I met this girl. She was cute and funny and I wanted to take things slow. Just be friends with her. I didn't want to subject another person to clingy me, she was going through a breakup and I wanted to help her. So I did I sat with her for hours while I helped her get over this person who had abused her very badly. She would talk with me about my situation. I quickly got over mine, it being a quick summer fling. Through fixing myself and her leaning on me, I truly fell for her and she fell for me. We both admitted to one another our feelings. It took about three months for her now ex to get completely out of the picture. That entire time, I held my ground and didn't allow myself to get too clingy. I started to feel more confident but still struggled with my own issues. Through all of this time together and us both finding ourselves again, we found love in one another and she has helped me grow to be myself again. It might not seem like much to everyone but I am proud of my progress and without that shit attitude getting me rejected I may not have been single when I met her. Even now as I write this on my phone, she is asleep next to me. Every day is an adventure with her. Every day I wake up happy and ready to see what the love of my life has in store. Without her, I wouldn't be me anymore.